body of Christ. So Jesus Christ said before he ascended into heaven, he said, I go and prepare and prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I come back to receive you unto myself that where I am you may be also. So Jesus Christ went back to heaven and he's preparing a place for all of those who accepted what he done on the cross because he died on the cross and once they pierced that spear through his side the blood and water came out well that was the blood that washed you and i from our sins so that was the sacrifice without the shedding of blood there could be no remission for sins there could be no atonement so he died a substitutionary sacrifice he became our atonement he atoned our sins. So he paid the debt price. Right now, those who are not in the body of Christ right now, they're really the walking dead. The walking dead. Right outside of Jesus Christ, they are walking towards their demise. It's like when they say about walking with your face. Well, here's the thing. The Bible says we're saved by faith. We're saved by grace rather than through faith. It is not a works. It is not the works of man, lest any man should boast, but it is the gift of God. So faith, God gives us that measure of faith to believe. We have to first believe that he is, that he does exist. So God gives us that faith, but then he gives us grace. That grace is the unmerited favor of God. So we're saved by grace. We're saved from what? We're saved from the penalty of sin, death, and the grave. Those are the three things that awaits mankind. Death waits every man. And we will all face it one day. We will all die. The thing is, if we die in our sins, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages mean payment, right? The payment for sin is death. That death is eternal. Eternally separated from God, but in a place called hell. That's the difference. Hell is not a vacation spot, right? It's not a walk through. Well, nothing like that. You know, that's just that's just a that's that's, that's just a, 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 a phrase. That's just a phrase, but it doesn't really have the impact of what the Bible says about hell. Hell is for real. It's no it's no reality TV show. It's not a joke. It is serious. We got to go through hell to get to hell. No, we got to go through Jesus to get to heaven. Not through hell. We got to go through Jesus. You know, what we call hell is something man has made up. Because he says he's having a bad time, or he lost his job, or someone in the family has passed away. They call that hell on earth. But that's nothing like hell that the Bible speaks about. That you're a three-part nature, right? You understand that? That your body, soul, and spirit, that's how God made you. Body, soul, and spirit. What is that? Your body is world consciousness. You are conscious of the world. That's the body. Your spirit is the intellect consciousness, the ability to do. That's what God gave you. You have the ability to create things. That's the intellect. Your soul is God consciousness. That's the consciousness of God. That's what you are. You are three-part nature, body, soul, and spirit. That's how God created every human being that walks the face of this earth. Everyone has a soul, and the soul is eternal. It lives forever. It can only spin its place either in heaven or hell. That's the only options you have available to you, heaven or hell. If you choose Jesus, you go to heaven. If you choose to continue to live in sin, which is break God's law, what is sin? The Ten Commandments, right? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, right? Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt take, thou shalt not take the Lord God's name in vain. Thou shalt not be disobedient to your parents. So these are, you have the moral laws, the civil laws, and then you have the the, the, uh, the, the, the law of God. And when you break those laws, there's a price to pay. Natural laws, right? We break natural laws, what happens? We got to pay back. Well, not no, natural laws. If we steal, if we commit murder, what happens? If we do things out of the ordinary, we go to jail. <laughs> That's the consequences. When you break laws, natural laws, you go to jail for that. Well, there are spiritual laws. And then we break those laws, it's the same thing. We have to actually deal with those laws. So this is where Jesus Christ is returning for his church. The 
church are those who repent. But don't think of church as an edifice. Don't think of it as a building. It was never a building. They only they only worship in a building. But church is the body of Christ. That's what the church is. It's the body of Christ. It is He, Christ. When you think of church, think of Jesus Christ. And that'll change your perspective for you. But the church is for fellowship. When, you, when, you, when we talk about... Yeah, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Listen to this, right? The church is the body of Christ. You have a body. You have two eyes, you have a nose, you have a mouth, you have two ears, you have two arms, you have two legs, right? You have a whole bunch of organs and cells that move in your body that make you, right? There's not this, that make you what you are, right? It's not one thing. It's a combination of many things. Well, that's what the church is like. You and I can be in the same body of Christ, but we need to fellowship. We need to fellowship because just like when you hurt, I should be able to feel that. When I hurt, you should be able to. But how, how, how can we feel that unless we are around each other as a family? The church is like a family, like your family. You feel your family when you're with them, right? Well, that's what the body of Christ is. It's a family. We feel each other. We need each other. We are around each other simply because that's the way we understand what needs are needed and how we can help meet those needs. That's the family. Now, that's that whole thing called love. That's the love of God. The love of God is about uniting families. It wants us to be the world, to become one big family. What I see most of the time is if you think you're worse off than other people, how about the people that are worse off than you? Right, and that's true. That's, that's absolutely true. There are, there, there are people a lot worse off than what we are, right? Especially third world countries, right? I can understand what's happening in all of the other what was happening right there in the Puerto Rico? Nobody even wants to find their crime. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't they do something? Right. Right. They just let everybody do Absolutely. Right. I agree with you 100%. It's part of the, it's part right. of us. Well, yeah, because they, they, they are part of the United States. I mean, it's and it's things that are out of our control. Yeah. Well, you know, they are part of the United States, and, and the United States has a responsibility to Puerto Rico. Oh, well, yeah, when you talk about all the states. Yeah, absolutely. What is your name? I'm sorry. Nice to meet you, sir. My name is Dorian. It's a pleasure meeting you. These are signs. These are signs that point to this. The Bible says in the last days there should be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famines, earthquakes, tornadoes, thunders. This, this is what's happening. This is coming about simply because this is bringing and ushering in the time of the leaving of the church. There are horrible times coming after this. Horrible, horrible times. They're going to be a lot, lot more greater than what you see now. That's why Jesus is preparing his church so that they won't be here when that happens. He's given everybody an opportunity. No one is excluded. It's all inclusive. Everyone has the opportunity to be a part of the body of Christ. And if they are, they will be taken up and out. They won't be here. Do you know what's going to happen? Nuclear war is coming to this country and the world. Do you know what's going to happen during a nuclear war? Here's what the Bible says. This is what's going to happen. Third world war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have right now, every day that you wait, you open up your paper, you turn your TV on, you turn your iPad on, your iPhone, your Android. What is the first thing you hear when we talk about war? The threat. There's always a threat of what? Nuclear war. North Korea is threatening the United States with nuclear war every waking day. It's a reality. It's going to happen. You know why it's going to happen? Because the Bible says it's war. And the Bible says one third of our humanity will die in that war. Do you know how many people walk in the face of the earth? 7.5 billion. You know what a third is? 2.5 billion people will die in the next war. In the next nuclear war, 2.5 billion people will lose their lives. You know who those 2.5 billion people will be mostly affected? 60 to 90 percent of those will be innocent civilians, much like yourself. You don't want to be here when that happens. That's why you need to make this. And the way you make that is through him. You 
you go to Jesus Christ and you repent, you say, Lord, forgive me for sinning against you. I'm a sinner. I'm in need of, 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 of healing. I'm in need of, of forgiveness. And Jesus Christ has made that available to you. That's all you have to do is repent, believe, confess your sins to Jesus Christ. And he will forgive you. Why? Because he's righteous. He's a just God. No matter what your sins are and how many you've done, where you come from, who you are, doesn't matter. He said, I will take your sins. I will cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember them no more. That's what Jesus Christ would do for you today. You can have that, and you can have that insurance in your heart that if you die, you know you didn't die outside of Jesus Christ, and your place will be. Because the, here's what the Bible says about this. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And then those who are alive and remain, still on the earth, shall be caught up together with them in the air, and so shall they be with the Lord forevermore. That's what the Bible says. That is the next great event to happen. You want to be numbered in this event. This event is not a good event. White throne judgment. That's called the white throne judgment. Well, who's That's judging who? God is judging the world. Well, yeah, but they're not. Are they considering themselves? They're not considering themselves. God. No, no, no. That's God. God is calling each and every one of these people who did not make it here and who continue to live in sin and sin against God. God is calling them up to the podium and they have to stand and give an account for their sins. God says, and that's going to be a, we're talking about from the day of Adam, since the day of Adam. See, you can't think of this in, 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 in your, see, because you say, how can God do that? You know, that's too many people. How is he going to do that? See, but God is a, yeah, God is an infinite God. He's able to make this happen because in eternity, eternity is not subject by time. Time doesn't exist in eternity. So you can't think of it in a natural realm. This is a very spiritual realm. So don't think of time like you think, oh, that would take forever. No, it's not going to take forever because time doesn't exist there. That's the difference. So God will be able to judge every human being that ever lived. And why? Because he's just. Justice calls for God to give a fair trial. Everyone has to have a fair trial. He can do that everywhere at the same time, and it's not dependent upon any natural means. Because remember, God is infinite, right? He's omniscient, he's all-knowing, he's infinite, he's sovereign, he's omnipotent, he's all-powerful, right? Because he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and he's omnipresent, he's everywhere at the same time. He can do all that. He's the creator of heaven and earth. There's nothing too hard for him, you know? He created us. How long have you been doing Well, I've been a born-again Christian. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior over 32 years ago. But I've only come out here on the boardwalk for this matter two months ago. Yeah, because I didn't see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been out here probably every, maybe three days a week, if the weather's good, I come out. I come out from around 3 o'clock to 5.30 or 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm normally out here right by that time. But Sal, look, it's, it's really nice talking to you. And, and I hope that you give that some careful thought. Daily bread every day. Yeah. Just don't read it. Here's the thing, Sal. I want you to take what you read. I got that little Bible. Whatever it is. Yes, that's good. That little book. Yeah. Yeah, you need to take that and ask God to give you clarity. Be sincere about it. God will open your heart and He will allow you to understand exactly what you're reading. Because we all need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given whereby we can be saved but through the name of Jesus Christ. No other name. There's no other name. That is the plan of salvation. It is through his son, Jesus Christ, who is the incarnate. He is God becoming flesh. That's who he is. And he's trying to reconcile us back to a relationship with him. That's called redemption. He's trying to redeem us back from the curse there's a curse. Okay, let me ask you something. Certainly. How many people stay in, How long have you been here? About a couple hours. How many people stand here and listen? Not many. Not many. Not many. And that's okay with me because no, you know no. why? How many people walk back and forth? Quite a few. 
quite a few walk back and forth, and I've, I've been here for a while. Yeah, you know what? And and they hear my message, and I I, I invite them over uh, to to to, uh, to just try to have a dialogue with them about that. But here's what the Bible says: Some people's hearts are very hard, and God can't reach them. It's not me, God. It's not by coincidence that you're here right now. I believe God well, maybe, called you here for a reason. A no, no, I don't believe in coincidence. Oh, no. I believe God has put you here for this time. For this purpose, there's a reason. And once you get to believe that, you see that your life is not some accident. God has a plan for your life. And he has something he wants to do in you. He wants to do something great through you. That's what God wants to do. And he's preparing you right now, this day. Well, not gambling. It's not in money, right? It's not in money, right? What profit is a man to gain the whole world and in turn lose his soul? You see? Because that's the things that we think we need. But those things, we need some things, but we don't need all those things. You know, money is not my priority. You know, money is not a priority. It's a necessity, but not a priority. It's not something that I look to work entirely upon. Right now, I'm concerned about these people here. Right. And like you had said, Puerto Rico, I'm thinking about those people. And all the people, California, that's what we need to be concerned about, right? You know, not so much selflessness, right? Selfishness, but selflessness. That's what we need. We need to be more selflessness and not selfishness. And not care too much about ourselves, but care about others. You read the paper. I'm not saying one story after another. Yeah. These are the last days, as I said. So. The Bible says that men should be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. There should be civil disobedience. Civil unrest, wars and rumors of wars means war on drugs, race wars. There's all these things happening and they're happening more frequently than what they were because we're heading to this point. That's why they have war. And God has given everybody an opportunity to see that he is trying to draw them. He said he stands at the doors of your heart and he knocks. But no one wants to open it. Why? Because they're motivated by other things. Other things are more important because why they don't believe that their soul even exists. They don't believe it. And know why? Because they have a cloak. You're not gonna have everybody like the same. You know, just what about if everybody was the same? Well, not the same. Not, not the same. Not, not 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 like that. No 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 no. Not like that. Everybody's an individual. God made you unique. Everybody's unique and different. That's how God made us. But all of us abide by the same laws. Every last one of us. It doesn't matter who you are. You know where you come from. That is the law of your creator. He said that is his law and we must follow his law. And if you don't, there are consequences. So that's the reality of where we are. You know, we either believe it and receive it or we deny it and reject it. You know, but that's because you have free will. God doesn't force itself upon anybody. Free will. He didn't force you to come over here. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. That was your own free will. Right? That's your free will. But what God will do as a result of you hearing his word, he said, to whom much is given, much is required. So now he's going to expect you to do something with it. Not just to sit on it. Not just to hear it, to be hearing it. But you want to be a hearer and a doer. You have to be both. Not just one. Because God will hold you responsible for that. You know, so don't take it lightly. Don't take it as just words, but they do have a very, very lasting meaning. It's very impactful. You know, so really consider that because... Like a, like a, like a, like a, no, 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 like what you're doing. Well, I don't know how God is going to use you. Right. It's, I, he can use me no matter what way or... Right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. any way he chooses. He's not limited by what you're limited. You know, God can do great things for you. You'd be surprised that you can... You know, you realize that it's not you, that it is God. You know, what I do is not me, it's God's gift in me. God's Holy Spirit dwells in me, and as a result of His Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit speaks through me. And that's what He'll do to you and everybody else who is in the body of Christ. There's no respect to persons. That's what He'll do. It's really nice talking to you. Look, I hope you have a great night today. And hey, I'll be up here again if you want to stop passing talk some more. I'll be up here again tomorrow, but well, probably not tomorrow, but Thursday and Friday.
think it, that's what it's about. The same well, there's, sort of like we can have the same thing, but there's only one Jesus. There's no other Jesus. He's the only one. Out of place, everything. Well, because we're human. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. That's what we do as humans. God bless you. Alrighty, take care.